Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Leuco means white and plachia means a flat patch. It is a precancerous condition that causes white or grey patches inside the mouth. Leucoplachia is a clinical presentation rather than a disease process. The patches are hyperplastic lesions of the oral squamous epithelium with some of the cases tending to malignancy, ultimately giving rise to oral squamous cell carcinoma. The white patches, unlike oral candidiasis, cannot be scraped off easily. The etiology of oral leucoplachia is unknown. It is generally thought of as the body's benign reactive response to irritation of oral tissues. Some predisposing factors most frequently blamed for the development of idiopathic leukoplakia include tobacco use, which is considered to have a strong association with oral leukoplakia, alcohol consumption, chronic irritation from dentures, malocclusions that cause chronic biting of the cheeks and tongue, candidiasis, vitamin deficiency, endocrine disturbances, and possibly association with the human papilloma virus type 16 and 18. The global prevalence of leukoplakia is 2.6%, with the malignancy conversion rate ranging from 0.1 to 17.5%. Various studies have shown that up to 20% of lesions can become malignant in the next 10 years. It is more common in men than in women. Elderly population in their 5th to 7th decade of life is mainly affected. Approximately 80% of patients are older than 40 years of age. Clinically, individuals with oral leukoplakia are asymptomatic. It can appear anywhere in the oral cavity and falls into one of the following two main groups. The homogeneous leukoplakia, which accounts for 95% of all cases, and the non-homogeneous leukoplakia, the much less frequent lesions. In homogeneous leukoplakia, as the name suggests, uniform white plaques are present and usually have low pre-malignant potential. The lesions are flat and sometimes might be wrinkled. Non-homogeneous leukoplakia is far more serious than the homogeneous type. And as the name suggests, it includes mixed components of red and white and has several subtypes. These are speckled or nodular leukoplakia and the verrucous leukoplakia. The speckled or nodular leukoplakia has white flecks or fine nodules on an erythematous base. Since it has red and white intermixed lesions, it is also known as erythroleukoplakia, regarded as a combination of or a transition between leukoplakia and erythroplakia, which is nothing but a red lesion. The verrucous type has sharp or blunt wart-like projections. A special high-risk form of leukoplakia is proliferative verrucous leukoplakia, characterized by the development of multiple slowly spreading and keratotic plaques with rough surface projections. The lesions in the beginning are indistinguishable from verrucous leukoplakia, but they later usually develop dysplasia and transform into full-fledged squamous cell carcinoma. Proliferative verrucous leukoplakia is an unusual variant of leukoplakia and has a strong female predilection with 1 into 4 male to female ratio. And surprisingly, unlike other variants, it has minimal association with tobacco use. The following five clinical criteria demonstrate a high tendency of leukoplakia to change to malignancy. The verrucous type is considered to have a high risk of malignancy. Erosion or ulceration within a lesion is highly suggested of malignancy. The presence of a nodule indicates malignant potential. A hard lesion in its periphery is predictive of malignant change. An oral leukoplakia of the anterior floor of the mouth and under surface of the tongue is strongly associated with malignant potential. 
In all cases, sterilative risk of malignant potential is confirmed by the presence of epithelial dysplasia upon histological examinations and is considered a gold standard for assessment of malignancy. Coming to the treatment, surgical excision of the lesions may be considered to treat leukoplakia. Cryotherapy ablation and carbon dioxide laser ablation can also be used. Because of the unpredictive behavior of dysplastic lesions, an immediate biopsy on any suggestive areas with a change in appearance should be performed. Smoking and alcohol consumption cessation is necessary since it has a strong association with tobacco use. The patient should be followed up every six months for three to five years after treatment. The area heals rapidly after biopsy and healthy mucosa is left behind. However, uncertainty remains regarding the risk of invasive carcinomas subsequently arising in sites previously treated. That's why a follow-up is indicated. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.